and there's a young woman in Simcoe County who certainly defies all the stats about girls in math and science. Maya Burhampukar has been on our show a couple of times in the past talking about her research into Alzheimer's, about asteroid hunting. Well, she has a different project now. It's about climate change. We'll speak with her after sports with Scott Regeer. Thirteen minutes now before eight. Sixteen-year-old high school student Maya Burhampurkar can count many accomplishments. Among them, she's a Canada's top 20 under 20 award recipient, a two-time winner of the Grand Platinum Award at the Canada-wide Science Fair, and a student advisor to the Ontario Ministry of Education. Maya has a special passion for science, and we've spoken to her twice before about her involvement in some pretty impressive projects. But her latest venture has taken her into the world of documentary film production. Maya's on the line to, from her home in uh, Oro Medante to talk about this. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be back on the show. Well, thank you for joining us again. Well, you have uh, done research into Alzheimer's. You've hunted asteroids. Why now tackle climate change? Um, well, two years ago, uh, I participated in an expedition to the Arctic, and I was absolutely shocked by the stories that I was told of the destruction of Inuit communities and culture due to climate change. But when I got home, I, I found that my peers were rather tone-deaf to the issue, and uh, I decided to film a documentary as a fresh attempt to put climate change in a new light and to mobilize global audiences, particularly young people and politicians, to act. Um, so instead of focusing on the facts and the figures like typical documentaries do, I decided to highlight the stories of Inuit people living in the Arctic um, and the impact that climate change is having on them. Mm. Now, it's called 400 ppm. What does that refer to? So the title of the documentary refers to the recent scientific finding that for the first time in 2.5 million years, carbon dioxide levels in our atmosphere have hit 400 parts per million. And this time, most of that was man-made. And the problem is that the last time carbon dioxide levels were this high, sea levels were actually five meters higher than they are today. And so some are actually saying that this could be the start of uh, a sixth mass extinction on our planet. And the problem is particularly acute in Canada because Canada is actually warming at twice the average rate of the rest of the planet. You saw some of these melting glaciers when you were in the Arctic. You saw this firsthand. What was the impact of climate change on some of the families that you met? Um, well, it was, it was just devastating. Um, I mean, so much of the Inuit culture is infused with ice. It's connected to the ice. And now that that's melting, that's wrecking havoc on their lives. Um, and things like, like ice fishing um, in the winter and using traditional kayaks in the summer to go fishing in the summer, um, that's just becoming completely impossible. Um, and there are actually some villages that I visited, uh, particularly in Greenland, where their economies have been completely destroyed because of climate change, and that was just devastating to see. You know, you think that the younger generation is more concerned, more aware than ever before, but you found that that wasn't the case. Why do you think that is? Well, I certainly do think that we're more aware. I mean, it's something that we've been learning about um, in elementary school and in high school, and we've heard about so many times, but I think that we've just become inundated by, by the, the news of climate change to the point where I think climate change has become more of a buzzword than than something actionable. Um, and so that's part of the reason why I wanted to create a film that would highlight the stories of people just like you and I, mm. um, instead of just the statistics that we usually hear about. How did you get all these people to participate in your documentary, from Chris Hadfield to Margaret Atwood and, uh, sci uh, you know, environmental scientists? <laughs> um, well, mostly just by emailing them and asking. <laughs> Um, so I actually met Margaret um, at a conference that I was speaking at last year, uh, and she was speaking at as well, and, and Chris I met a few years ago as well. Um, and, and so when I emailed them, they were all happy to be a part of the documentary. Um, you know, they're all absolutely wonderful, and they all come from incredibly diverse backgrounds. And so each of them added this really unique aspect and fascinating perspective to the documentary. What about um, the footage? Did you shoot all that? Where did you get that? Uh, the majority of it I did. Uh, shoot myself. Um, there was also a, 
videographer on our expedition or two videographers on our expedition and so I was able to borrow a bit of their footage but yeah I went to the Arctic with a, a little digital camera and filmed a lot of stuff myself oh well it is uh, an incredible documentary you did a great job what impact <laughs> are you hoping that it will have um well I really hope that it'll cause climate change to stop being a buzzword and it'll become much more personal and immediate for people. Um, and I've produced the documentary as a completely open source, um, non-profit project so that it can be shown by anyone anywhere free of charge. Uh, and so I hope that people will share it with others um, and be able to experience what I experienced on my Arctic expedition. And it's just been a few days since the documentary was released, but I've already gotten emails from teachers across Canada saying that they've been showing it in their classrooms, and I got an email request to show it at a conference in Alberta. Uh, and so it's, it's taken off into something much bigger than I ever thought it would be. And you know, for that, I'm really, really grateful. Well, uh, you did a great job, and it's a great explainer, very accessible. Maya, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you so much. All the best. Maya Burhan Porkar is a high school student and filmmaker from Oro Medante. Uh, she's just released a documentary film called 400 ppm. If you'd like to watch it, you'll find a link at cbc.ca slash Ontario Morning.